So we're playing outside. He is drilling the sandbox as he does. And I suddenly realized that I have to poop. Uh-oh. You were inside showering, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I tell Wes, Wes, daddy's going inside to poop right now. Can you please come with me? And he says, no, but I really have to poop. So I just go in there. And he, he says no to everything. He says no to everything, right? So there I am. I'm pooping. I'm having like, you know... Like a temple of silence, you might call pooping in the bathroom. So you left our son outside with the drill. No, no, no. No, no, no. I mean, yes, yes, yes. (laughs) He somehow gets dirt on his hair because he moved on to the shovel. I think he flipped it up and got dirt in his hair. And then he was very stressed out. And he came running towards me. And said, Daddy, dirt in hair. And I hear him. And I I am mid-poop. Fully, I run out with a piece of toilet paper in my hand, my pants <laughs> dragging around my ankles. <laughs> and I say, Wesley, what's wrong? And he says, dirt in hair. Dirt in, dirt in, dirt hair. in hair. So I'm trying to wipe my butt <laughs> real quick so I can go give him a hug. And he's very stressed out because uh, there's dirt in his hair. Of course. Of course. Who wouldn't? Stressed out. So I'm running back with my pants around my ankles, grabbing more <laughs> toilet paper, <laughs> thinking that it's okay, and then running back to Wes. <laughs> because he's not okay. He's, he's still not like, okay. I still have dirt he in my hair. He still has dirt in his Where hair. Where are you going? So I just like really quickly wipe. Like I'm talking like full on, like I've got it rolled up, like around, like a lot of toilet paper. So, so wait, but power did, wipe. Did you, did you, were you done? Or did you basically, not have really. To, you <laughs> no. you kind of had to just clench it off. I just had to. Clench it off, wipe it, throw it, like rip up my pants, and then I ran over, held him, and he's like, poop. <sighs> or no, he's like, dirt in hair. Dirt in hair. And I was like, yeah, that, that can dirt be stressful hair. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> tell me. Tell me all about it, yeah. Wesley. It, it he's, was... he's really good at telling us when like something is wrong. <laughs> 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 yeah. Dirt and hair. Dirt and hair. Owie on ankle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I I hit that, my toe. And that was just this morning. Wow. And now here we are recording the podcast. You've already had quite the morning. Welcome to Baby Steps. It's episode four. Ariel is 28 weeks pregnant. What? Is it already episode four? That's right. It's already episode four. Oh, okay. Yes, I am 28 weeks pregnant. You probably have no idea what that means. I don't know. So 28 weeks. Seven months. Is a big deal. Yeah, I guess it is seven months. Um, It's a big, big deal because at 28 weeks, that's basically the mark of viability. What does that for mean? a baby. Well, it means that the baby has a good chance of living if I went into labor right what? now. I know. Whoa, we did it. We did <laughs> yeah. it. That's huge. I mean, I'd love to keep him in there a little bit longer. Right, right. But yeah. That's amazing. I know. I mean, great? a month, two months ago, we were really worried about everything with your short cervix yeah. and keeping the baby in there. Yeah. I mean, still, still. And we about still that. are, but you're saying that now it has a, like, what? What's the percentage? It's like, like 80 to 90 percent. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's yeah. that's yeah. I'd still want to keep him in there. But that's that's oh, my goodness. I know. This I is know. huge. I know. We should celebrate. We should celebrate. What should we do? Drink LaCroix. OK, cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I need to drink this first. <laughs> yeah. So if you're watching on YouTube, Ariel has this giant jug of water. <laughs> what's the deal what's, what's the, the deal, deal with this what's why going am i on? carrying this around i mean That's an i'm excellent talking question. giant it's like this is heavier than a newborn let me uh, let me let me hold that it's bigger than my head it's got little time of day on it yeah so so these things these are great uh because one of the proven ways of like not going into premature labor and having beautiful skin and having beautiful skin i mean is staying hydrated mm. yeah that's a big one it's a really big one a lot of the complications with pregnancy um and some of the like things that are just a little bit uncomfortable can be solved by drinking water <laughs> and mm. drinking enough water really yeah but you already have to pee a lot it's the, oh, so true. now this is gonna be just oh yeah no it's it's pretty ridiculous how often I have to pee my bladder is like my bladder is like the size of an acorn um, 
<laughs> tiny little bladder. Tiny little bladder. Tiny little... But uh, I, I, what would you? Uh, how would you rate this product? I mean, oh, this, this could be product? a mini product this review. This product right a here, a giant jug. Yeah, this is a one hundred ounce jug of water. Oh dear God! And that's uh, a big, big gulp. Yeah, yeah. Approximate capacity. Is that four liters? Four quarts? I think it's three Two liters. Two gallons? No, it's three liters because one liter is thirty-three ounces. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's. A little under three liters. If a gallon is 64 ounces, that means it's almost two gallons of water. Yes, I approve this product. Um, I think everybody <laughs> needs one. Wes thinks it's hilarious. Uh, he basically, he picks it up and he and he says, I'm going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just find so hilarious. He's like a 1920s steel worker. Yeah, I'll, see, like, oh, I'll see you later. I'm going to work. Bring my thermos. <laughs> Okay, so 28 weeks. Uh, do you want to know what uh, fruit or vegetable your baby is Always. at today? Always. It, uh, right now, they say a head of lettuce. What kind? Romaine? That's a really good Iceberg. point. Iceberg? On the image, it looks uh, it looks a little bit like romaine. I'm not going to lie. It's uh, it's not as round That's as That's a terrible Iceberg. image. <laughs> okay. That doesn't look anything like lettuce. <laughs> I, I imagine it's just like a little ball of iceberg lettuce. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? But romaine would be more like the, the fetal position. No, romaine would be more like the stretched out position. Oh, okay. Wait, position. which one's romaine? You don't know the difference between romaine lettuce and iceberg lettuce? Well, you don't know what SpongeBob SquarePants is. <laughs> <laughs> are you always, are you just going to keep hanging that over my head? <laughs> no, romaine's like the one that's like longer and like it has like food poisoning every so often. You know me, I'm a butter lettuce boy. You are a I butter lettuce boy. I just love me some butter lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, eat, you'll eat anything. No, you're a, you're a ranch on spinach. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm very bad at making salads. You are terrible at making salads. <laughs> If you have to cut it, you're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? The baby is blinking right oh, now. That's, that's very I've exciting. I've been doing a lot of movement. Really? Like a lot, a lot of movement. Like what type of movement? Is the baby moving now? No, <gasps> is the baby not. kicking? No, 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 can I feel it no, on, you cannot. on podcast? Oh, um, no. Okay. <laughs> this is, my body is a temple. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> my body. Th actually, that brings up something that I think... Uh, that women need to hear is yeah. that just because you are pregnant does not mean that people can touch you. That's right. Um, that uh, just, including, just as a rule, including your husband, including your husband, <laughs> including your husband, you know, just because my belly is out there for the world to see does not mean that I, I am welcoming other I mean, strangers. Isn't that hands. just the worst? Like you're going <laughs> shopping. Someone says, Oh, you're pregnant. And they just like reach at you at least like, COVID, people are not quite yeah, doing that yeah. as much. But. People are staying away. But I certainly remember like... Uh, strangers. Strangers. Strangers coming up and, you know, like I, I, I never had a stranger actually touch me, mm -hmm. but I had a stranger like go like this and like want to touch me oh, and like put their hands out and right. just get them very close and be like, baby. They want to feel the energy. I guess. Get some, some Reiki healing. Or really, I think that was their way of like... Uh, non-verbally asking if they could mm -hmm. touch and right, I right. and I non-verbally said get away from me <laughs> oh yeah what, what was your non-verbal way of doing that did you just like put your arms no, up or just give them a stiff no arm? no I did not give them the you turned the, your like back the football arm I sort of turned to the side and like looked uncomfortable for a mm -hmm. second mm -hmm. and I was mm -hmm. like no thank you it was the same thing with a newborn like everybody wants to touch your baby Right. Oh my oh, gosh! Yeah. Oh, do you remember? Yeah, I remember. Do you remember when we, when we went out to get sandwiches when Wes was like? He was pretty young still. He was little. He was little, little. He was like three weeks old. Right. Arguably, we shouldn't have done that. I mean, he <laughs> he was safe. He was in his car seat and all that. Yeah. Um. But um. Uh. Yeah. And like an Italian grandma comes over mm -hmm. and is like, like "Oh, oh do, 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 do. little baby!" She reaches into the like into the stroller, and I was like, "Whack!" <laughs> Yeah, slap her hand. No, I, I didn't actually slap her hand, but like in my head, I did. Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. Do you? I mean, Ever, yeah, it was very stressful. That was one of our first big adventures out. And we we're like, yeah. oh, we're getting sandwiches from our t favorite Italian sub shop. Yeah, and there's all these people around. We're like, okay, there's a fair amount of people, but it's, <laughs> it's okay. okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We got them in the stroller and kind of strapped like, in. We'll, we'll put up the hood. We'll put up and the everything hood. And yeah, we got the double hood. Yeah, and then yeah grandmas Gosh, they're just like just magnets those hands to babies. reaching in oh my god yeah yeah 
yeah so uh 28 weeks i um you know like i there are women who have complications in pregnancy and have babies at 28 weeks that and most of them do just fine that's really great news yeah and it's and they don't have like long-term uh health problems wow i know isn't that great that's great so like now from here on it's it's all just like it's just just getting yeah it's it's and not having a traumatic two months in the NICU exactly yeah 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 (laughs) um yeah so now he's just getting you know his his lungs are developing and just making sure everything is working properly and he's getting chubby yeah do you remember how skinny Wes was when oh I know he, he was, was so tiny guy. He oh was my so god little. I look at photos of him and I'm like I know he's so tiny and now he's so big I know I don't well, how it's gonna it's gonna feel so surreal having a little tiny baby again I know well you know some women have have newborns that are. 10 pounds over 10 pounds can you imagine Ew. oh dude. that's a huge baby that's a big baby that's a huge baby that's a big old chunker yeah you know compared to what we had which Wes was uh, under six mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. under six pounds <gasps> he he's less heavy than that jug of water oh my gosh he was less heavy now he he's, was less heavy now he's an actual chunker yeah yeah um he's getting too big for me to do my baby workouts i know well actually I'll like swing him around that's like a not I, you know that truly that's not his problem that's your problem that's true i gotta get strong you gotta get stronger. you're right there are people that can lift more than 35 pounds <laughs> <laughs> just not in this house <laughs> I, I get about eight ten reps in i'm like oh daddy needs a rest daddy and he needs says a more 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 <laughs> It's good motivation. I mean, he's he's a great motivation. I mean, we have talked about how he comes into our room in the morning, which I love. It's so cute. I love. You can hear mm-hmm. his little pitter patter down the hallway because you know he's coming. Yep. You know he's coming because he the, struggles with the doorknobs a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, and so you, you hear can it. hear the click, doorknob click, moving like, a little bit now. And like, and then he opens up his door, and it's a straight shot from his room to our room, mm-hmm. and then it's just like. <laughs> Tap, 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 tap. Our house is laid out where there's like uh, all the bedrooms are in a line, and a there's hallway. a line from the back of our bedroom in the bathroom all the way to the back of his room. It's just like a straight, it's like a sprinter's path. It's a racetrack. It's about like a 50 meter, you know, type of span. And he is just, he runs back and forth. He does. He scooters back and forth. He uh, pushes the train back and forth. Yeah, it's the straightaway. Uh, I will one. say the first couple of times that I heard him going into our bedroom in the morning, uh, I was I was so disoriented. I thought it was like somebody breaking in. Really? Yeah, because I, I, I'm just not used to people entering our bedroom while we're sleeping. I, I guess that's fair. I was like, is this uh, like a mother-in-law? No, we don't <laughs> have guests. Wait, what is... Uh, Oh, it's my child. I love it. I think it is so fun. And he's so I've verbal. Used to it now. He's so verbal right now that he'll walk over to my side of the bed and he'll go, Time to wake up, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> and it is just it's so cute. Clock. It is just so cute. I'm just so glad it's not happening an hour before it is. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> like six thirty AM, very doable. He's become very five thirty AM time to wake up. Yeah. A bit much. He's become very consistent with his wake up time, which is great. Yes. It's about six thirty, six forty five. Kind of living the dream right now. I know. I mean, we're about to go back into the trenches, but right now it's like it's we got, great. You know, we can sleep in the evenings. We have a reliable wake up schedule. He's very cute, talkative. Oh my gosh, so talkative. Uh, but yeah. it's like we're gonna go back into chaos. Yes, absolutely. Zone, and I don't know how Wes is going to deal with it either. I know. You know, we'll see. We'll see, and we will keep all of our listeners updated. Yes, yes. <laughs> Anywho, well, uh, what are we talking so about today's today? Today's episode is all about daddy fears. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, in this period right now, I feel like. I get a lot of attention mm, because I am pregnant. I have the belly. Mm-hmm. I'm the one, you know, growing the child. Yes. Uh, as you should. Uh, yeah, yes. As I, as I should. Thank mm-hmm. you. Your I skin looks that. glowing today, by the way. Oh, you are getting so much better at this. <laughs> um, and, but I, I, I actually, this, th- this was my idea to talk about daddy fears mm-hmm. because 
Um, I don't think that dads get enough uh, attention right now. Mm-hmm. You know, like, uh, especially with first children. I remember with our first pregnancy, um, you you were very strong and, uh, you know, very supportive. Didn't, you know, uh, really make me more scared than I needed to be or anything That's like good. that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that you had some fears, you know. Oh, yeah. You had thoughts, too. Your life was changing. You had to plan for things and, you know. And, and and I know that you wanted to touch my belly and that you wanted to be <laughs> involved in yeah. the process and everything, but you know, you sort of took a step back and as like as you have to, because it's not your body. Mm-hmm. It, uh, mm-hmm. and you're not the one who's, you know, dealing with the nausea and mm-hmm. the this and the that. So we wanted to talk a little bit about what are what are the guys feeling right now? What uh, yeah. and it doesn't have to be the guys. It, it could just be the you know the non pregnant partner, right? Um, right. You know what what are you what we'll what what were your thoughts? Flip this around, and now you can interview me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, do you want to talk about our first pregnancy and and sure. kind of what that was like for you? Yeah. You know, we we waited a while to get pregnant. We did. Um, we did. I mean, we had been married for several years five six years mm-hmm. we had been dating for about seven years so we we definitely thought it was important to have a a grounding of our relationship yeah before having kids and i feel like we did that I feel like um too. it's but it's a big change you know yeah. i was what when the baby was coming i was worried about how it would change our lives and i was hoping it would be for the better but i think you're always a little bit afraid of it 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 kind of disrupting things and and hurting your relationship i mean it's silly to think but i i even was a little bit had this fear of like well what if ariel loves the baby more than she loves me oh and we kind of invest all of our energy into the baby but then and, our, and relationship lose our relationship and our our connection suffers yeah that was that was a fear that i had as to how you know, the baby would change our lives. Sure. And so how did that make you feel? Like, what did, what did you do about that? Was What did I do about it? Oh, man. Uh, I don't think I did anything about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just swallowed your fear and, yeah. and moved on? I just tried to uh, tell myself that it wouldn't happen uh-huh. and to make sure that, you know, I guess we, like, even throughout the first six months of the baby, we still tried to have date nights you know we still tried to have times where we'd get a babysitter or For bring sure. like one of our our parents over yeah. and just have the confidence that because we had had that time of being just us that we had like a solid foundation yeah. with which to just go into the wild wonderful world of parenting together totally and so do you feel like it's so so how about now? Do you feel like those fears were unwarranted? Do you feel like, you know, uh, things have changed? What's? Uh... I mean, I think it's definitely that that ha- that has happened a little bit because it's just there's you you don't always get each other's full attention, right? Right. But then there's this other wonderful, you know, kind of boundless love that has been unlocked that that is now not just something that's like a one-to-one between you and the baby, but it's kind of now it's- We share it. Our family and it's something that we share. Yeah. You know, so- Like it's opened new areas of connection. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Um, But I think it's something that you have to, that we have had to kind of make time for, you know? Oh, yeah. Because it's very easy to just get sucked into only talking about the baby and only caring about the baby. Oh, especially in those first few weeks. Oh my God. Do you remember? I mean, oh, I, yeah. I don't think we, Oh, that was a, it was a struggle. We'll, yeah. we'll probably go back to that when we have the second one. Do you mm-hmm. remember, do you remember that book that I got? Um, maybe like six months in. Yeah. How not to hate your husband. Yeah. after kids. That, that book was a little, uh, worrisome for me that it was a book that existed and a title that, um, <laughs> was purchased for the household. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. That was a little. That was a little worrisome. 
<laughs> it had a lot of like, really good information in it. Yeah. What was some of the what were some of the ways that you <laughs> attempted not to hate your husband after having kids? <laughs> One of the big things was uh, sharing chores. Oh, that's true. And yeah. just being very open about um so one of the things that it talked about was um w- after you have kids it there is a lot of um unspoken communication that happens mm. because you know you're th- th- there's just less time there's less time yeah. to talk about the the feelings that you're having and the you know th- the things that you're going through you know i remember when we were <laughs> when we were singles uh or not you know when we were, when we were child childless, <laughs> yeah, when we were childless. If you would come home from work, how was work? Yeah, what, right. You get a whole. What did you get up to today? How are you feeling? You What's really the... talk and connect? Yeah, but now, uh, would you say we? I, I mean, now that we have a toddler, I think that we can talk a little bit more. But you know, when it's when it's the baby, it's you know, it's all schedules and and no sleep and. Yeah. Everything, everything that is difficult about having a newborn makes a relationship difficult I think as so. well. Yeah, because you might not have that time to connect with each other. You might just be like handling the, the business of, of life. Absolutely. And or if, even, I mean, there have been times when we've been talking about something interesting or something about each other. Yeah. Even just as simple as like, how was your day? And Wes has a different idea of what he wants to talk about. Absolutely. He usually does. <laughs> Dirt in hair. <laughs> Dirt in hair. Um, and I I would say that, you know, those little um, uh, annoyances mm. really can grate on a person mm-hmm. when you're not talking about them and when you're so overwhelmed. Right. Just yeah, you with, have less sleep. Yeah. Less sleep, more work. Something um, like the dishes not being emptied or something. You can right. all of a sudden be like, why does this always happen? <laughs> right. So so h- hilariously, one of the like um, one of the examples was like putting dirty dishes in the sink or mm, putting them mm-hmm. in the dishwasher, you know, and it's like some people like to put them in the sink. Some people like to put them in the dishwasher, but it, it depends on like how you feel and if I want them in the dishwasher, but you're putting them in the sink and we haven't talked about yeah. it for weeks, then it builds up to this thing where it's like, you are always you're doing so this yeah. and I hate it and I can't <laughs> believe you're so un... You don't know how much work I'm doing. Yeah, and- I think there's a real... I mean, this is something that not just parents could appreciate but there's there's a real risk in any relationship that you can feel like underappreciated uh, but i think it's so much so more when you have kids cuz mm-hmm. there's just there's just not enough hours in the day for both people to get everything that they want to do done right and you you are both feeling so overworked and you feel like you're doing so much that it can be very hard to like find the time to say like Hey, I really appreciate that you did that yeah. thing. Or you hey, know? I thought you did a really good job today with X, Y, Z. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's and and then by the same token, you have to like tell yourself and let yourself relax and understand that it like appreciation might not always be coming. So you have mm-hmm. to like you you're not going to get a medal for emptying the dishwasher. Right, exactly. Maybe just like you can do it and then hope that even if <laughs> it's not notices. noticed or it's not like explicitly appreciated, yeah. it's implicitly appreciated. I so like it's that. a weird like you have to try and say more things that tell you tell your partner that you appreciate them and mm-hmm. also be aware and okay with the fact that you might not always get um the appreciation that, that you obviously deserve well, because course, you're doing so course. much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Emptying the dishwasher is such a huge thing yeah. in our family. <laughs> it really truly is. Um, thank you for emptying the dishwasher. You're welcome. Um, and I, th- this is something that I think a lot of people that maybe don't have kids could uh, understand or, or be kind of worried about. Related to that idea about fear of your relationship suffering, I think is... Uh, fear of your lifestyle changing you know we like going out to dinner we like going 
out to bars and I think there was a sense of oh it, all of that's suddenly going to go away and then maybe our lives are going to be less fun and then that kind of ties into the the fear about relationship yeah um, and, and I you probably don't remember this but I remember you voicing those fears when oh, I was yeah. when I was pregnant and you you know kind of saying how oh our our let's go out now because our lives are going to change so much mm -hmm. that we're never going to be able to do this again and i remember i felt completely differently yeah that i i was always saying uh no 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 we can do the same things with a kid we can do the same things with a kid mm -hmm. you were worried about traveling yeah i was you, worried about traveling. you wanted to like see the world before we had kids yeah and there's a sense of uh carpe diem that we yeah. needed to do everything that we yeah could and do in our 20s and we we did do i mean we we're you know we did do it well in our 30s now and yes. we did a lot of wonderful Absolutely. exciting fun things in our 20s but i felt like we could still do those things with kids and that our kids would benefit yeah from doing those things with us as a family yeah you know um and i will say now two years into it um there were there were so many ways in which you were right. You know, we took Wes to Australia and Singapore. Yeah. And it was a he little different, it. but it was great. He loved it. We took him to London and Paris. Yeah. You know. But he was just a little nugget and he like would sleep on my chest on the plane. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, some things were very difficult, but some things were really just better Yeah, with a kid. And there's even like, you know, I still we could make time for me to go out and have beers with a friend at a bar or right. something yeah. or, you know, go on, go on like, uh, go hiking with my college friends for a weekend or, right. you know, go on like a bachelor party trip. Like there, there still were those yeah. moments. Uh, certainly we weren't like going out every weekend, but also I started to not want to do that as much. Right. Absolutely. That, yeah, that was a change. Eugene texts me like 11 p.m. Like, hey, are you coming to WeHo? We're all going to the gay bars. And I was like, I need advance warning if I'm going to have a night right. like that, Thank sir. Thank you. I need to, I need to, <laughs> I need you to know, get a babysitter. warn my wife <laughs> that she's going to be on call all night. Yeah. <laughs> I need to give her at least three days notice. Uh -huh. I mean, there, there are... It's changed. There are a lot of things <laughs> that have not changed. not as flexible. <laughs> there are a lot of things that have changed, but there are a lot of things that didn't change. And there are a lot of things that changed for the better. Yeah. Um, I remember one conversation that we had when we were in Paris with Wes. Um, and this was, you know, the second time that we had been to Paris together. Mm -hmm. And we were experiencing things through him. Yeah, that was really cool. Things and continues that, to be cool. Yeah. Because he's... Everything is like a new experience for him. Right. right. Some of those times in Paris, it was like his first time at a big museum. We never noticed there was a carousel at the base of the Eiffel Tower. Mm -hmm. There are just some things that you don't see as an adult yep. that you do see as a child. And it's uh, it's beautiful and it's, it's fascinating. Even just seeing the excitement in his eyes at like a big truck. Right. Or like a bo big a, boat. A boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, cool boat. <laughs> like we went on a, like a river cruise. Yeah. And it was, it was so exciting for Wes. I know. I know. Uh, and it, it wasn't even that we were on a river cruise. It was that there was like another kid there who had a ball. That's true. <laughs> uh, I mean, just fascinating. The things that kids get into. Um yeah, I mean, garbage trucks are a really big part of our life. It really is, yeah. Trash really day, street sweeping day. Mm -hmm. We heard a big truck today, and uh, Wes was like, trash truck. And then he realized that today wasn't trash day, and he said, no, street sweeper. <laughs> like, Smart kid. <laughs> this kid loves days of the weeks, but really it's about what trucks come and, when. And he, he doesn't know the days of the week. It's not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, Friday. It's poo poo truck day. It's poo poo truck day, trash day, and street, street sweeper day. day. Yep. <laughs> so when we were having our garage renovation, uh, there was a porta potty for the contractor. And they had to, and a truck had to come every week to clean it out. That's right. That's right. So Wes would watch the big tank truck 
uh-huh. suck out the poo poo, uh-huh. and he said, "Poo poo truck, poo poo truck." Yeah, and then the guy would, and then the guy would wash it, and we do uh, all of this from our from our front windows. He just uh, he just watches the whole thing. Unfortunately, the man who drove the truck was referred to by Wes as Poo Poo Man. <laughs> <laughs> poo Poo Man. I'm sure it's not the first time. Uh, I'm sure it's not the first time. Like the the truck drivers actually really seem to enjoy watching Wes watch them. Oh yeah, you know it's like uh, always wave if there's a horn like honk the horn. Toot, toot. <laughs> yeah i mean they they must get that all the time yeah i yeah. this is this Little is not the first big trucks i've definitely uh i so there is uh i have a mom friend who when she needs also congratulations on having a mom friend oh yeah oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you i it's appreciate big deal. that it's big yeah. deal mom friends hard are to a find the dad friends hard we to find the mom will, friends we will bring this up later it's a good episode finding uh, friends but yes mom friends are very important <laughs> um and uh so i have a mom friend <laughs> period <laughs> full stop no I, I have a, i have a mom friend who when she needs to distract her toddler mm-hmm. um she hands him her phone with a youtube video of garbage trucks we did that and i was telling wes about seaplanes and we watched a like a video of just seaplanes taking off and landing yeah it's fascinating. We were like, look, here it goes. And then, oh, it's coming down. Again, back to the, <laughs> back to the things that kids find interesting. It's just so funny. Yeah. I mean, Wes could, Wes could play with like rocks for hours. He did when yeah. he was like a, a, a small child. When he was just learning to walk, it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I will say something that was is really huge and helpful in letting us like have that balance between our own relationship mm-hmm. and our family life is getting uh, people to help you. I oh, When man. we were 28, the thought of going to Paris with your mother-in-law was like, would have been, was like devastating to me. That I was, was like, why would, that would be all, like, why never. would we do that? It's I wouldn't so even, not romantic. If I, even if I brought it up, you would be, you would be like, be like mad. Like kind of bummed at out. The, just at, sad. Just like, at the this is my thought life now. that I would even think that you would want to <laughs> hang out with my mother-in-law <laughs> for that long. And after the kid, it's like, Oh my goodness, I can't wait to it's go like, to Paris how is with your, your mother in law. <laughs> She's still coming, right? Yeah, so we went to London and Paris with your mom. Mm-hmm. And it was awesome. It was fantastic. Because when we wanted to go out for an evening, we, like, she was so excited to, to watch s- the baby. Right, to stay there with him. Yeah. I mean, they, they really bonded on that trip. I remember, you know, he had a little bit of, of like a jet lag. Um, problem and we were working on that trip and right. so uh so so the, the first couple nights we needed to be out and we needed to be mm-hmm. like doing things in the city and um and so my mom you know took the brunt of the uh like the sleeping problems mm-hmm. with uh with the time change um huge they were precious there was one night when i when we walked in after we got back and they were both just sleeping on the floor together <laughs> It was adorable. Yeah. It was so adorable. And I, I mean, I can only imagine how difficult that must have been, but she was so delighted to just be involved and be so close to Wes for for that period of time. Yeah. That was really fun. Yeah. It was a good trip. And now uh, when in preparation for the second baby coming, we have mm-hmm. like planned out like, okay, your mom will be here here and uh-huh. my mom will be here here. Yeah. And they they are so excited to be there. Yeah. That's so okay. My number one um uh, advice for new moms mm-hmm. right now is take all the help you can get. Yeah. But don't take anybody's advice but your own. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Which which is which is funny and, and ironic because it's advice that I'm giving them. That is true. Yeah, that's true. Yes, yeah, so you don't have to listen to it if you don't want to. So you don't to. have to listen to it, but take all the help you can get. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Even if it's somebody that like maybe right now in your in in your pre-child life, you don't really like their, even if you sort of tolerate a person mm-hmm. uh, and they offer to help you mm-hmm. with, a, with a baby, take it. Yeah. Take it. Right. Go go Even take Eugene. a shower. <laughs> Eugene's actually quite good with Eugene's Wes. excellent with Eugene's really good at a lot of things. That's true. He's good at everything. He like 
he's he's very um, humble about the things that he's good at. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, true. not that humble, but but he he's good at everything. Aggravatingly humble. <laughs> Aggravatingly humble. He's good. At, he's even good at being humble. That's true. He's even good at being humble. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, even though you know Eugene babysitting like might involve uh, several glasses of white wine, you, oh, we'll take it. Yeah. We'll take it. Yeah. So those were some of the fears I had before the baby came. Yes. I'd like to tell you a little bit about some of the fears I had during the actual birth and yeah, labor of course. process. I mean, I probably... You don't really know what was going through my head. You were in your own world. Absolutely not. And rightfully so. So what was going through your head? Well, the baby came about a month early. So I had all of these physical fears of like, what if something's wrong with the baby? What if Ariel's hurt? Like... I did not know how much blood was involved in birth. <laughs> well, you I, you you hadn't done any research either. No, you were gonna do it. In the <laughs> I was four gonna do it in the after last we month. moved into the new house. We were at the hospital, and it, I'm already disoriented because it was like a month early. So I'm just on edge, and you have your. There's a moment where uh, it's called the bloody the bloody show, the bloody tell where a part of your body like comes out. It's called the mucus plug. Okay, the mucus plug, right? Uh-huh. Uh, and then- Part of your body comes out. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you have like blood streaming down your legs. I'm like, I did. oh God, I did. I've watched movies. <laughs> this, is, this is how miscarriages happen. <laughs> I, there were so many times through that birth process, I was afraid. And the doctors, I mean, they, they had the... Um, like the the tools used for birth mm-hmm. are like all of these little tiny pokey things, like little tiny knives, little tiny scissors, uh-huh. little tiny like grabber scalpel thingies. Oh man, I'm like, that's gonna go on her <laughs> in here. <laughs> I was worried that you might have to have a C-section uh-huh. and that I would see <laughs> your insides. Oh, man. I was worried. That's a lot. I remember like, you know, when babies come out, sometimes their their head bones like overlap for a second. Oh, so I like when the baby was that. crowning, the head was not smooth. It was kind of like bumpy. And I was like, oh my God. He's something. broken. He's broken. <laughs> He's mangled. Ah, you know, that's like, that was my biggest fear was that something was that you were going to get hurt or that the baby was going to be hurt. I like this, the whole with your short cervix and the baby coming early, potentially that was a big, like, like twi- we're like, what? Oh yeah. Absolutely. What do you mean? Things don't just go smoothly. Right. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Like uh, after all, like I had all these fears, but it all went so smooth in retrospect. Right. right. This time around we're like, oh, well yeah, it's not, you know, a little, a little blood, you know, a little, little snagglehead. I mean, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of turns out great. But yeah. like this time, it's we had a chemical pregnancy, like a miscarriage in February, and then now we're worried about the baby coming early. And there's all these things where it's like, oh wait, no, this actually is a pretty fragile process. Yeah, very fragile. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it was it was fragile the first go round too. We just um, didn't know it. We just didn't know. Yeah. We, we did not know. I mean, it was almost like I was worried about the wrong things. Right. <laughs> you were worried that the baby was going to be malformed. Yeah. And, or, you know, or that it was just too early and that something was going to go wrong. Right. I didn't know that, oh, 37 and a half weeks, you're fine. <laughs> like, I mean, not everybody's fine at 37 sure. and a half weeks. But yeah, we we were in the NICU for two days. And that was so traumatizing to us. I know, I know. But, but in but, retrospect... It just needed to get a little bit bigger. And right. the fact that some people are in the NICU for two months and mm-hmm. it's very stressful, but it turned out o- turns out okay for them. Right. I mean, it's like... But but of course, for, for us, you know, all the stories that we had heard from parents or, for, or, or from, you know, other friends who had had children, um, they didn't go to the NICU at all. It, yeah, it, was, right. it was not a normalized process. And the, I will say... It, and if anyone has a a child that has been to the NICU, my heart goes out to you because it, it's a very it's terrifying and it's a, yeah. and traumatizing place. I mean, it's it's 
it, you see all these really tiny babies and some of them have uh, you know yeah it, health it, issues it can be it can be traumatizing for some people but for other people it's a it's it's life saving i mean it's yeah. it's a it's a safe space mm. because they know that their baby's getting the best care that mm. that they can get mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know imagine imagine That's a really good way of looking at going it. you know g- going back to the beginning of the podcast imagine a 28 week old baby that's true you know tiny teeny teeny tiny size who, of a water bottle who can't <laughs> a little, little lettuce a little lettuce baby a little lettuce baby yeah <laughs> romaine oh, that's so tiny yeah teeny teeny tiny baby who you know they just need to get bigger yeah and so the NICU is is the place where you know these these like heroes of nurses and doctors yeah. Are able to you know to work on these teeny tiny little babies. They are heroes. They are I'm, heroes. Uh, our <laughs> NICU nurses and doctors. They were. I mean, shout out. We were so scared. We were so scared being there, and we kept thinking, "Why are we here?" We read most of the first act of The Hobbit. Yes, we did. <laughs> we just sat there next to his little next to our little baby. Yeah, reading The Hobbit mostly <laughs> for each other. Yes, of course. I think we got about as far as uh, Bilbo, like, hiding from the the Nazgul riders. Did we get that far? I think they were at the bridge, yeah. They, they know, made it to the Brandywine Bridge. Oh, all right. All right, fair enough. I think. <laughs> I mean, we've both read it so many times that <laughs> there's a good chance that uh, it were, we just, like, remember it in our heads. Hobbiton? 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 <laughs> And then um, uh, let's talk about some dad fears like after After, labor. yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because they're, we kind of fall into these gender roles, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's somewhat about like the physicality of breastfeeding where right. you are often tethered to the baby and that is, is your role. And then I am, uh, you know, not after paternity leave, but uh i'm like going out and being the breadwinner right so but that gave me fears of one being stressed out about money Uh and two being uh stressed out that i wasn't like i wasn't there enough or that by going out you know we went on this big 27 city tour and i went on a tour bus and it was in the early days of our company launching with a lot of late nights absolutely 10 11 p.m with a very uncertain picture about Was it going to work out? And were we going to make money? Right. And so I was worried that I wasn't there enough for Wes and for you. Uh huh. I mean, Uh, yeah. Going going back to those gender roles. I mean, uh, that is a lot of times how it works out. Is that the mom takes the the brunt of the uh, the early childcare? Yeah. Just because you're feeding a baby and. There's a lot of different families and you may not fall into gender roles, right, but I think there's always a, a bit of a, a tension between who is the primary caregiver mm-hmm. and staying the most around the baby and who is the the secondary caregiver with maybe more flexibility to right. go out into the world. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. There And yeah, there there is, at least for us, there was no, there was no equal caregiving. It was right. one of us was the primary caregiver and the, the other was the secondary caregiver. Yeah. And would you, I mean, would you say that's in general how, I don't, I, I don't actually know. I think for a lot of our friends, that's how it's been, but yeah, I, you know. I, I think that's a stereotypical arrangement between at least a guy and a girl between, because like of the, the breastfeeding factor. Mm-hmm. But you know, we have friends who either couldn't breastfeed or chose not to breastfeed. Our situation is not the only situation. Right. Um, It'd be very interesting to hear from a same-sex couple as to how they are. I I would love uh, care I, dynamics. I desperately want to hear from our listeners um, what what those those situations are. I mean, just as we were talking about our like the the way that we sort of fell into our roles, our producer Rachel is is you know saying that she and her husband were able to um be equal caregivers yeah yeah. not a primary secondary but both kind of being yeah pretty even Um, and you know one of my close college friends his wife is an anesthesiologist Mm -hmm. 
And she is the primary breadwinner. Yeah. So she went back to work very quickly, mm-hmm. uh, was pumping, mm-hmm. and he took a year off from work to, to be, be the primary be caregiver. Be a stay at home dad. Yeah. I love those stories. I We want to hear more of those stories. We want to hear all of the different um experiences that people have had you know if if you uh if you're in a same-sex couple and you know having going through fertility uh you know just had a kid Mm -hmm. and 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 deciding what your roles are Mm -hmm. um we want to hear those stories and uh and talk about them on the podcast yeah you can so write us send them in to babystepsadvice at gmail.com that's our email address for all things baby steps. So yeah, let us know what you want to hear. Yeah. To wrap up the fears, the one really sweet thing you did for me was, I think it was Father's Day the first year. Yeah. I did something nice for you. You did something very sweet. <laughs> yeah, I did something nice I for did you. Something nice? You gave me a book that was called Days with Dad, and it was a collection <sighs> of all of these photos of special moments that I'd had with Wes. And when I looked through it, I teared up a little bit because I realized that there were there were so many moments that we had had and that I was there and I was a big part of his life. And I put him to bed nearly every single night and that even though I went on tour, it was only a couple weeks and then I came back. And yeah. that, you know, a lot of the fears that you have, sometimes they're just fears and there's ways of getting around it, ways of um, preparing so that you don't have those fears and to realize that sometimes it's just kind of worries that you have in your head and that you are doing right amazing and that everything's going to be okay. You you know, you also have to know that it's a marathon, not a sprint. That's right. Yeah. Uh, you don't, it, you didn't need to be there with Wes every single minute of every single day. Yeah, when we think about the tour being like two stretches of two weeks. Yeah now in you know of his entire like life that's that's not very much at all that's definitely true i i remember how how scared you were that you were afraid that you were not going to be there enough yeah that because you were working missing his first steps yeah that was really scary for you yeah and you know there are some moments that you aren't there for and that's okay right right (laughs) because it's a there's a lifetime of uh moments that's right Uh, well we're doing something fun where if you rate us five stars on apple podcasts uh we and leave a funny parenting story we will read it aloud on the show it helps other people discover the show the response has been amazing so far so thank you everyone for tuning in for listening and and for you know being a part of the community you know this uh Parenting uh, takes a village and yep. you're part of our village. You're part of our village. We can't do this podcast by ourselves because we only come from one perspective mm-hmm. and we need your perspectives to round it all out. Um, I think we should get Rachel on the show. I think we should I wanna, get Rachel I on the show. I want to hear from the mother of twins. Yeah. Um, listen up for that. In the next couple episodes, we're going to have the mother of twins, <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Cole. <laughs> mother of dragons. Are they two dragons? Right now, sometimes she right says. now there, sometimes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, adorable little baby dragons, mm-hmm. those two, um, yeah. And Rachel's going to tell us a little bit about her, uh, her pregnancy journey, her fertility journey, mm-hmm. and about her parenting journey. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So uh, wait for that, and um, yeah, keep keep writing in. The, these are the stories that we need to hear that that Ned and I need to hear, but also that our listeners need to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, so keep keep writing. Bye-bye.